All right, Matthew, welcome to episode 41 of the Performance Advantage podcast with myself, Dr. Will O'Connor, and Dr. Matt Miller, aka MTB PhD. Today on the show, we have Matt's Break Power Meter update, Will's training report this week in sports that we talk about, new smart shoes, and we've got topic of the week planning your season, how to write a successful training plan. And shout out from our sponsors, EnduranceTrainingHub.com and SmartMTBTraining.com. Go there to get training for everything from triathlon, ultra running, and mountain biking, enduro through to cross-country and cross-country endurance. Matt, we are giving away a training plan, one of our Training Peaks premium training plans that are available for you to purchase on the Training Peaks platform and we're giving one away for free and all you have to do, you don't even have to be a member, you just need to leave a review. That's wow. it for the podcast. Wow. Yep. You know what stirred this up is because like at the moment our Training Peaks plans are blowing up. So like New Year, New You. Yeah, New Year, New You and like it is time to get training. So we're like, wow, people really like our Training Peaks training plans. We should give one away. All you have to do is leave a review. Like a review really helps us. We're giving you all this information. We're going to give you a training plan. Please just leave us a review. <laughs> <laughs> please leave us a review. Please. Please. Actually, I've never left a review for a podcast, but um, now would I be did. a good time. I have a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, they're the doing this, like a shout out thing. Oh, okay. So, okay. Anyway, let's get on with it. So, you may know Matt Miller, aka MTB PhD, is the inventor of the world's first brake power meter for mountain biking. It measures the work done when you're braking, so how much energy you're taking away from your downhill speed when you're braking. It hasn't been done before. Matt has invented it, and we're going to get a bit of an update on what's been going on with the brake power meter. Matt, hit us up. Oh, yeah. I wasn't sure what I was going to say today for the brake power meter update because it's mostly like pretty much sitting in front of the computer all day trying to work out really useful metrics. I've been working on lots of them, actually. Oh, sounds and, exciting. You know, it's all about being more efficient at, at using your brakes. So we're giving you scores that tell you how you performed in these different categories. And that's taken a long time to actually use the data to get to this point. But in terms of an update, I don't really want to say much more. How do you like Four. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was thinking no I, news <laughs> is good news. Yeah. yeah I get you. There, you know, there's, you know, confidential things happening that, um, <sighs> you, you know, so these are things that only stay in my home office kind of things. And, um, you know, so then I was thinking, well, maybe we should do Matt's training update. Oh, okay. Yeah, you because, know, like, I got out for a couple three-hour rides last week with Caleb. Wow. So, like, so, you know, like, I was on my limit. <laughs> or, like, sucking wheel, right? Yeah. So, that that was actually going to be my training update. He's, like, every, you know, everyone's training for nationals, so everyone's, like, getting pretty tired. So, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll be able to hang with him now that he's so tired. Um, And... You know, I got pretty tired, actually. You know, the, <laughs> the rides got a bit leggy for me, I will say. Like, he, he's he got some watts, you know, even at endurance pace. So I was, like, riding side by side with him for, you know, quite a while. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting much, I'm getting pretty fit, I must say. And um, so I'm riding side by side. I'm like, okay, we've been doing this for two hours. We're not even close to home. And uh, I should probably stop riding so side by side with him. So then I would, you know, <laughs> slip back into the slipstream. Be like, okay, I'm back into definitely my maintainable endurance zone for sure. It's a little harder to chat and things like that. But, you know, I made it home and I didn't crack. So, you know, two days in a row. So that was pretty good. And the trails were just phenomenal. So I obviously got out for lots of mountain biking. And, yeah, the riding has just been all time. So, yeah, just been loving it. 
So you racing? Well, we have um, in two weeks. I go down to national championships, but and Oceania championships. So it's like continental champs and national champs. Where is that? That's in Dunedin, in the South Island of New Zealand. And I will be taking my bike, and I will not be racing. So, so I have four athletes racing between downhill and cross country, and I'll be there supporting them. So I'm 100% support role slash check out cool trails and rent the van and drive the van and kind of thing. So no racing for me for that one. But we have, um, you know, how, you know, we had that running race that we were going to do. Yeah. You and I, where I promised you I'd do it. And then I tried to think of an excuse. I actually came up with a good excuse. But it turns out on that same weekend is our local North Island Championships, which actually happened to be in my hometown. Which is, you know, definitely a race that I would do. Yeah. But I'm going to be gone. So now you're, and now you're skipping two races. Yeah. So, like, I'm skipping one I promised I'd do. I'm skipping one that I'd really like to do. And I'm just going to be on holiday sipping margaritas. You on know? The boat. Yeah. So, so, yeah. We, I have a race later in February, so that I'll do. So, looking forward to that. Will's, Will's training update. So, we piggyback off of Matt's training update. Yeah. And mine, like, it's pretty similar. Um, well, first off, if you want to find out more, check out my new YouTube channel. Yo, yo. That's right. Yep. Uh, something I've wanted to do for ages and I've played around on YouTube. I've got a few videos up there under the performance advantage banner, but now I'm, I've got my coaching business pretty well set up. We've got this podcast. We've got a good listener base. Um, I'm trying to get into like the top echelons of professional i guess elite like ultra trail running and i thought you know what i'll i really want to share my journey like i want to show the ups and downs and how it's not like all just faster getting faster and faster and getting better and better results um there's a lot that goes into it there's a lot behind the scenes that i do to become a better athlete and and everything everything i talk about on this sort of on, on this podcast uh so that is dr will o'connor on youtube just search that up I'll put a link in the description, but check that out. A um, couple videos a week, just generally keeping, um, want to help educate people like this podcast to become better athletes, better endurance athletes through understanding new um, information tech uh, and and training modalities that we learned during our time at the university. And it's kind of our job to curate that information, I feel. So yeah. Check that out. Um, but as a quick update, I won 200 bucks, Matt. Yo. Yeah. That is sick. Yeah. That's rare was, in New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. So I came third uh, at a half marathon. What? Uh, over 200 weekend. bucks for third? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. From what I know, you didn't even know this race was on. Yeah. Well, because I rang Matt and then yesterday and uh, I can't remember what it, whatever. And he's like, I didn't know you were doing a race. And yeah. I was like, yeah. And he, so I was running with a friend and um, she knows the owners of the event. And I've done it as, as a multi-sport festival. So initially it just used to be a half Ironman. And I'd done that back in my triathlon days a few times. And they started adding different events to it. Um, and she said, oh, I'm doing the half marathon there. I said, I didn't know there was a half marathon there. You know, And she's like, well, there's prize money. And I was like, whoa, if I don't know there's a half marathon there that means not many people know <laughs> and definitely no one will know that there's prize money so yeah i was like fitted in my training um i was planning to do a 60k run that day uh but i shifted that to like this week middle of this week and shifted my anaerobic session um so still focusing on the anaerobic threshold because the start of the 100k is like so fast um that i'd still need to be able to maintain like a quite a high intensity sounds um, like bad right. pacing but never mind <laughs> and well that's the thing like i it, it is going to be fast it's a fast part of the course so just if i can just eke out a little bit 
more efficiency um, at like a steady running pace, then I can, you know, maintain a better pace overall. So that's, it was all built in. So yeah, went to the race, had some specific goals. The like key goal was to not race, race it. Like my main goal is the 100k in four weeks. And we're talking about this in the next, you know, in our topic of the week. And so I had some very specific goals. I had some, I was running to power, Matt. You'd love that. Yo, and yes. yeah, so I went off like you, Matt, in your training report, you're riding next to Caleb thinking, this is too hard. This is too hard. This is too hard. And then it took you two hours to do something about it. Um, about, yeah, five minutes in, I was like, this is way too hard. <laughs> and, but I was, I was in fourth. So uh-huh. I had to, you know, that's out of the prize money. Yeah. And, I, and at that point, I was in for, and I still, I said, no, nope, these are my goals. Forget the outcome. Forget the result. Main goal was key workout session. I slowed down, ended up working out, and it was just, it was just a great, great day, great race, great event. Um, check it out on my YouTube channel. I ran through like all the more specifics of my race analysis and what I was doing and how it all played out. Um, I think you'll find that quite interesting. So yeah, that's my training update. No, this no, week no. S- no, 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 no. We're not so fast. We need to talk about your vlog. Okay. We need to talk sure. a little bit more about it because you had this dope video up the other day. I think it was yesterday actually. And it was still like you st- hadn't shared it anywhere. I was like, well, yeah. you, this is dope. You need to just like share this. So I shared it on Facebook. Um, thank you. Yeah. And I was like, you know, we need to get this out. We need to get this yeah, out. Yeah. Well, what were you scared? Like, the, you the have vlog, a vlog. Like, I know it's hard. It's hard for me. I don't, it, it's hard to promote yourself, like, and just to say, hey, everyone, look, like, look at me. Come like, on, I go feel spend like some I, time I in America. That, I do that enough, you know, um, with, with this, even this podcast, like the vlog is a big step for me to actually put myself in front of the camera and say, this is my, like, this is what I do. This is what you should do. Um, and I learned about it. It's, it's called imposter syndrome. Um, so it's like the more qualified you get, the less qualified you think you are to be able to be an expert. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. And so like, even like the podcast, I feel like I'm, I'm still just talking to you. I'm not like directly saying, like putting myself in front in front of people specifically. Um, so I'm still struggling to say like, hey, look, like watch me on YouTube. Like I'm and, so cool. Facebook. I'm so yeah. fast. I train so hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, exactly how I say it. <laughs> but you sound a little bit different. You have an accent. But people want to hear it. I don't, yeah. Like it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. And even if someone finds it and they don't follow you regularly, um, and they're not actually interested, it's still a unique perspective because you understand the science. You're training hard for big events and you have a really good ability to explain it. So I think it's a useful vlog for anyone to check out. So go check it out. Cool. All right. Thanks, man. And that concludes Will's training report. (laughs) Matt, the Consumer Electronics Show was on over the uh, over the last week, and generally, like it's just new phones, whatever better cameras, better, faster processors, blah, blah, blah. Any break sometimes, I don't know. Did you, did you go? I, I didn't Have know. you been to that? Did you go to that one back in the, no. when you were launching? No. Mm. Okay. I haven't, haven't launched yet. So maybe, no. It, yeah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> what was that? Uh, they, sometimes sports tech, uh, like it's trickling into like the, the, you know, like the Apple watch and stuff, like the, which is, it's getting into these activity trackers, the mainstream, not just our, our unique niche. Uh, and ASICs, ASICs, they launched their smart shoe. Uh, and I, this caught my eye because this is pretty interesting. So they've embedded, uh, they didn't really say, I think it's a bunch of sensors or maybe one 
base sensor with a whole bunch of accelerometers in the sole of a few of their shoes and it links to their app and they can help you with your running technique um so oh. you you couple you have to couple them together like it's not just a matter of you heading out for a run coming back and uploading the data there's a bit of that but if you film get someone to film you running specifically like film you running on a treadmill you know you fit within the the screen they have a little highlight and then they've got the data coming from your shoe and they've got the visual data from the camera and they can say hey look why don't you try more forward lean higher arm carriage increased cadence slower cadence uh vertical oscillation is too high so it's kind of like the stride um it's exactly what i'm thinking a little a less a little less heavy on the on the data on the tech and a little more on the recommendations and like camera based stuff okay. um so it's like a an additional thing to use in your 3d motion analysis that's that kind of what it yeah. is so it's but it's built yeah, into your yeah. phone or it's built into your shoe which definitely is connecting to your phone and is definitely yep. connecting to google and is going directly <laughs> to the cia yeah so I mean, this is just another way for the cia to track us when we're running i figured it was just another way to sell shoes um yeah, that's one way to look at it. But it's it's the next step. Like, it's the next step in the evolution of running tech smart training. Um, and also my future vision of like complete virtual reality sports. Complete virtual reality sports. Yes. What? Yeah. Go yeah, on. like immersive, immersive virtual reality. So like sports. Zwift for life kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a multi-directional treadmill um, and you have the full VR and it's getting all the data inputted from it. But yeah. I mean, you watched Ready Player One, didn't you? <laughs> Love it. I read the book, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it makes sense, right? Because who wants to leave their house? Yeah, you could get wet. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I think it was Wahoo. They had at Eurobike. They had this setup that showed mountain biking, like so. It was like a POV video on your screen, and you're like obviously just pedaling on a stationary bike. And I don't think you could really control where the video was going or anything like that. But the the GPS profile changed the resistance on the trainer. So it was a GPS profile linked to a video that have changed how you pedaled and then you watched this mountain bike thing. So you kind of felt like you were mountain biking. So that's yeah. also a start for like your vision. It's like, yeah, yeah. And they've got, um, those, they've got, uh, you can put your phone, which links to like, uh, Zwift and stuff with a gyroscope. So you can do slight leans and turns. Yeah. Uh, I saw that one. Turn. Yeah, that uh, was kind of lame. That needs some work, but it, um, cause actually a few years ago at Eurobike, I saw this one that, you know, you actually put the VR glasses on and you're, you're on this gigantic trainer that like rocks you back and forth side to side. And you're obviously kind of confused because you're not sure what's going on. Everything's shaking. You have VR glasses, but you know, all these things kind of, are pointing that direction. Right? We have technology and everything. But instrumented shoes aren't really anything new. But it's, you know, because there were power meters built into the soles of shoes. So that's been prototypes from multiple different companies before. So for cycling shoes, where you have a power meter in the sole. But now with someone like Asics, Asics, Onitsuka Tiger, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> uh, with them getting into the instrumented shoe technology, that's a big deal. Yeah, it is. Under Armour have tried uh, tried to do it a while a while back as well. So I think they had more like a simple sensor just to say when your your shoe was wearing out. Um, of course, probably immediately go buy some yeah. more. Two is is two weeks old. You definitely need 
new five hundred dollars shoes. Yeah. Uh it's yeah, so it's it's not new, but it is the it's the progression. And that's where like as running power meters start to become more mainstream, um people will be, you know, more regularly clipping something onto their shoe for a certain kind of data analytic. Like trail runners, I recommend all the trail runners I coach, I'm like just you don't have to get a power meter, like please do, but at least get the a foot pod. So a foot pod's going to make sure that when the GPS drops out, which inevitably does on trails, that you're still getting an accurate speed distance reading. Because if you if your five K's running five K's shorter than you think you've run, it'll look like you're running slower and like that can lead to think, you know, maybe this aid station's further away. I thought it was going to be two hours. So uh, oh and now it's here. Oh crap. I didn't um so just you know like that's that's sort of the first step like we're just there like just clip on a, a foot pod so you get more accurate data when we as people start to enter into like this the new 21st century of technology running technology like the smart shoes will just be part of it and i'm guessing like what nike what was it called nike plus or nike fit or something they used to have some of their shoes, you just had a pod and you could put it in. It was just a, a pedometer. Like it just measured your steps. But that was in, when I was just getting into running like 10 like years 1975. ago. 1975. <laughs> <laughs> and you could upload, you could upload that. You could upload that to your, to like, uh, map my run and stuff. That was, um, before where GPS was really a thing. So you could get like people like, Oh, I'm not sure how far I ran. Um, so this, it's been around, but now we're starting to integrate it with, you know, a phone, which we always have on us. And that's only going to be a good thing. This is like, you're just starting to see more steps into this integrative technologies. And so it's all for the was, CIA. It's all for Google. Yeah, all of it. Okay, Matt, so last week, 2020, New Year, No You. Oh, we've, yeah, we've I forgot talk- about that one. New Year, No You. It's yeah, time like to that. to get your training sorted, planning your season. People, are, they've got these goals. I want to I want to run 100K. I want to do a multi-stage mountain bike event. I want to do an enduro. Um, we need to make sure that we're training accordingly and we have an actual plan. I think the, that's one of the biggest things, right, Matt, where you see why why we're in, in business, why we have jobs, because people come to us because they need help planning their training. So today, we're going to go through the six points of helping you set out a training plan. And really, like, the basics is, like, pick your goal, pick your event. Right, Matt? Yeah. First, you got to figure out what you're going to do. Like, what do you actually want? And how committed are you? Those are, those are, you need to ask yourself yeah. those. Those are the first things you need to ask yourself. Like, in terms of the event, I just, if you can enter the event, then, then it's solidified. You know, this is one of the biggest things you can keep saying, Oh, I'll enter closer to the time, you know, I'll enter closer to the time. Not only you, missing out on the early bird entry fee discounts <laughs> but yeah. deals i know you love a good deal so you are definitely getting those yeah you're you're also procrastinating on training effectively you think oh i don't want to get injured i'll say i'll, I'll put it off i'll put it off uh, just just enter it you know it's unless you're you're doing iron man or something where the entry fee is sort of a thousand bucks most events are a couple hundred bucks and they have refund pos- policies on them. It's just, just put up, put it up, put it in and that will get you to the first level of commitment. So I, I recommend no more than six months unless it's like a huge like life changing kind of event. Get your event and then you can have your main one and then you can pick like a couple others. I generally recommend one big one and then like a couple 
lead-in ones or small ones or like a follow-up event uh, depending on like like what it is is that how do you do it matt like in terms of picking yeah. picking your key event yeah i think with mountain bikers we end up having a lot of events to do so with the pros um you know if you're doing the world cup you can't just be like well i want to be my best at the world champs because that's the biggest race of the year well you got seven world cups to do before that so you need to actually be ready for all of those as well because there's a lot riding on them. And, you know, even with cross country, we might be doing an event every other weekend for most of the year. There are a lot of events. And I understand, though, that in running, you just can't be thrashing yourself in a, in a race every weekend. Yeah. But even with your, like, mountain biking, you must still, like you said, you got world champs. You got Oceania, you got club champs, you've got something, right, that you're going to slot in as the, the one. Definitely. Usually what we're doing is we're picking three events that are the one. So yeah. that might be world champs, that might also include national champs, and then if there's another event that fits in nicely between the other things that we need to plan, then we can also target that event. But we're so... Definitely two events within the season that are our big targets at two time periods, really. And we'll talk about why the timing is important. But so definitely two events, usually three. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's, that's the goal. That's the first step. Like get your event. Yeah. So, so you got your event. Yep. You, you wrote an article on this. So to make it simple, if you don't want to listen to the podcast, go straight to Will's article on Endurance Training Hub. It is titled successful training plan oh no six steps to a successful training plan i like that so you broke it down into six steps and we we agree on these steps there's a million zillion things that go into a training plan but to simplify it we're, we're just going to stick to these six steps yeah and so that that's one right yeah so that get, is the very first goal. thing is yeah. pick which events you're going to do Normally, if we have two major goals, we'll separate them out so that way we can have a rest in between, right? Yeah, well, you're getting ahead of yourself because we're in it, step uh, two. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, step that's two. training plan. But time, you, it, it is line. part of picking time your events. Line. It is part of picking your events. So bear that in mind as we go through the next <laughs> five steps. And Yeah, obviously your you're events. not going to, yeah, yeah. Please don't put like two ultra marathons on like consecutive weekends. Yeah. All right, so then the the timeline, we have working backwards. So you've got to work backwards from, from your main event so that you know, you know, depending on what it is, you've got a taper. So you have to factor that in. You can't just include, think that, you know, oh, I've got 10 weeks until my event, I've got 10 weeks of training. You need to recover. So you've got that, then you have like what's going on in your life. Maybe you've got a holiday coming up. Maybe you're, you're going on a boat when there's a lot of major events around. <laughs> it's pointless scheduling that. Um, you, you can start to get your calendar out and work on the timeline. Like Easter weekend, probably a great weekend for, for training, doing a bunch of training, mini training camp, something like that. You can schedule that in. So you're going to need a recovery week after that. You're going to need some recovery leading into it. Those kind of things that that's where the timeline is, is super and super important. Um, what would you put like in your timeline, Matt? What are you looking at? So once we have a date, we put that date in the calendar and then we work backwards and immediately add in the taper. So the, the taper is usually going to be 10 to 14 days and we add that in right away. And then we go back to today, the date that we're starting or whatever the date is that we're starting. And then we count how many weeks we have leading up until that taper because we're not going to just straight up train right through the event so if the event is in 10 weeks then we have a two-week taper that means we have eight weeks to train and that's when we start building our training i'll also put in the like the recovery kind of so once i i understand like with someone who comes to me walk it out okay oh you got holidays here Great time for training, great time for recovery. So then you kind of got that. Then, um, 
that yeah that's the timeline and then really we get into starting to set out the training but yeah step th- three i think actually setting, with step right? two though the other thing that we add in right away is if we already know what the second event is and when that is we also plan immediately after the first goal we plan in a rest period because that rest period is super important so this is this also goes leads on to the training phases um, which is step four but we're going to add in that rest right away because you know athletes come for a training plan they don't want you to automatically add in four weeks of almost nothing but that's (laughs) actually training right resting is training so we're we're going to add that in right away because we know we're going to taper into a major event and we know we're going to rest after a major event so that's that's a given and that's that's in right away and then we start to plan everything else around that yeah so step three is analyzing the event or events This is something I feel like a lot of people miss when they are looking at their training, when they start to put out their their training plan. Like we're mountain bikers, endurance sports people. We kind of get into our sport because we love a specific aspect of it and we'll just concentrate on that. If you love to take the shuttle and smash downhills on your bike, that's great. But if you're doing an enduro, you're going to have to ride around a bit. So you got to analyze the event. You know, how hilly is it? Is there a lot of elevation? How long do you expect to take? Not just in terms of distance, but duration. Um, you know, what are the, what are the aid stations providing you with? Is there any aid stations? Like, are you going to have to pack everything yourself? Um, what's the terrain? What's the weather probably going to be like? Um, what, if you know people who have competed in that event in the past, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm generally an hour behind them, two minutes ahead of them. Have a look, like how long did it take them? Ask them about the event. Um, where is it? How are you going to travel there? Like all of that kind of stuff is just going to help allow you to pretty easily set out a training plan that's specific to that event or events. Um, what are some of the things you look at, Matt? Like when you're, you've got like, like you got your timeline. Now you're just kind of looking at the event. Yeah. Well, with mountain bikers, we have a much easier time at this. If you're doing enduro, you're probably going to be out for a pretty long time. And it could be up to eight hours, so you need to be prepared to be able to handle a volume like that, or a day like that. Yeah. If we're doing cross-country, we know what to expect. So there's going to be some steep uphills, there's going to be some steep downhills, there's going to be some fast road sections, and your race is going to last between... 60 to 90 minutes so that is super easy to do because we already know how we're going to train we know what we need to be ready for yeah uh, the one of the things that we do start start to look at so enduro they're going to be doing their gnarly descents and they're going to be working on tracks closest to what their goal race will be working their, what they're on terrain that's closest to what their goal event will have right so they'll be doing that um Cross-country riders, cross-country tracks aren't hugely different. You need to be able to tackle a variety of terrain. But sometimes we know, for example, that with Nationals and Oceania Champs, since we've been there before, they're both in Dunedin on the same weekend, we know that there are going to be some really, really steep short climbs. So we've trained specifically to handle some of those demands. So some mountain bikers fit that in just by way of going out and doing trails. Others, we need to kind of incorporate some specific, really, really high torque, high power sessions to prepare for the yeah. steepness because that's yeah, the yeah. unique part of that event. Yeah, so that's that's step four, is, um, step three, sorry. It's like analyzing your event to figure it out. Then we get into the training phases. So like, you know what the event is. You... You know what it's going to demand of you. You know what your timeline is. So you've like put in your training. Now we've got phases. We've talked, you know, a lot about the base phase. We've talked about, you know, our favorite interval sessions and how to put them on on past episodes. We've got a lot of information on monitoring your training load, um, using a power meter, 
all of the heart rate monitors. You can go back and listen to all of those. So now is a good time to step forward to put those phases in to, to practice. Um, you've got your timeline. So you go, look, you know, I'm not going to be smashing myself four months out from the event. It just doesn't make any sense. So you go, well, I can afford to train easy here. Um, you know, is the weather better? Like all that kind of stuff. You can go base phase, build phase, race phase, something like that. Um, but it is good to, to specific, like have a focus within your plan for each phase. So you don't get caught up in trying to, like, um, in my report, like racing that race. I know that that's not like that. That's not part of my goal within like training right now. Like what, it, yeah. Do you, do you always use the same kind of, um, you know, pyramid based system, Matt, where you go base phase, build phase, prep phase, race phase? No, I don't always <laughs> use that. I think it works for some, for most people. So the pyramid thing where we're doing base and then we're, we start to reduce the volume and increase the intensity the closer we get to the event. So that's your standard kind of periodization that you do. But this is where mountain bikers have it a little bit tougher. It's because every time we're out on the trails, you're pretty much guaranteed that there's going to be some intensity involved. So if you start to increase your volume hugely around a lot of mountain biking, you have the potential of doing too much. But the the thing is, like when we're preparing for mountain biking, we need to be mountain biking because mm -hmm. your skill is such an important element of performance in the sport, especially for the gravity fed disciplines. So you need to be out there on the trails, but then you also need to be working on your specific limiters, which might be something, you know, high aerobic or something really high intensity or something like that. So we need to be careful when we're planning our season that we're getting enough volume in, but we're not doing too much volume and intensity at the same time. And it's really tricky when there's a lot of mountain biking going on. Yeah. So yeah, I so would assume runners though, it's a little you, more straightforward. Are you putting within that, do you go, okay, this phase, we're actually going to be more on the road bike. Definitely. Definitely. That's something okay, that we yeah. do. And especially in the winter, like that's pretty easy, especially for the North American riders that I work with. Like they're snowed in, like they don't even have mm -hmm. a chance to get on the trail. So that makes it really nice for me because we can add in lots of strength training that's obviously really intense and then lots of aerobic sessions. So then suddenly you have eight or 12 weeks where they're itching to get on the mountain bike, but they weren't able to. And you just got in this dope few blocks of base training with a massive strength component. So yeah. you just had an ideal situation. Um, yeah. So in, in that it's, it's important to, to have that phase written down. So you're not going, all right, I'm going to do strength training and Zwift racing and then yeah. be itching to get on my mountain bike. Yeah. And then you're into another high intensity, like, cause you're just going to go shred trails. Ex exactly. Exactly. And you know, a lot of the riders that I work with, they'll block off parts of the, the preseason to go somewhere warm because they just want to ride trails so bad. And we need to make sure that they're ready for that. Because if you go into a period like that at the end of a massive base block, you're going to get the trails and you're just going to flounder around. You're going to feel like a wet potato bouncing around the trails. And <laughs> like you're going there for fun and to work on your skills. And if you, you feel like a wet potato, like it's not going to go very well. Yeah. Um, so we, we do plan those into the season, but we make sure like, okay, you go there for fun. You're going to get this intensity just by being on trails. Like that's also a really, really good week. Yeah. But I would assume with runners, like I know you guys focus on a lot of base style training where you're doing s consistent low intensity, at least with the athletes that you work with. And I know this is how you train a lot of the time, but are there periods that where you're doing like a massive base only phase? Um, yeah, because running is so demanding. Like it's just like, you just can't run easy. You, you, like you can walk. And that's kind of as easy as you can run. Like when you're running, you're fighting gravity, you're holding yourself up, you're, you're stopping yourself from falling over. So even at the easiest, it is, a, a there's a certain level of demand. Um, so 
yeah, it's always good to include the max I would say for doing just easy running zone two or below running would be four weeks. Once you start to do more than that, you aren't recruiting enough of well, one, your different energy systems, your different um, range of motion. So your like your running form starts to deteriorate a little bit, um, and you become less efficient. So really, the structure around it is just trying to incorporate some speed, but not in a demanding way. Like not with a specific focus, like where I'm in now. Like I've got, so I just did a half marathon at high threshold anaerobic threshold intensity i'm not going to put that in my base phase you know because that's so demanding i'm not even ready for it but then to put in a local like a park run um which is a 5k um which you know is for for most people is probably going to be around 25 minutes less than 30 minutes anyway to cruise down there you know run down um to a 15 20 minute warm-up do a run, like not expecting to go your personal best, but a nice hard intensity run back. Like within an hour, you have a, a very hard session that's going to take it out of you. And that's all you need for the, for the week. Whereas getting into the season, maybe we're targeting a 5k. You might do that as well as a threshold, you know, 1k interval session during the week. But pretty much you, you'll try to incorporate something that is going to be a bit different. Um, but then if, if your event is, um, very mountainous, huge climbs, you've got, you know, thousands of meters of climbing in it. And in the base phase, you're going to be running hills just through trying to run up a, a big mountain. You're getting quite a, like that's intense, even though it's like, like what you said, Matt, in terms of like mountain biking, it's low torque, high intensity. So you're actually, you're not moving very fast, but you're recruiting a very large muscle mass. Um, so it's kind of intense in, in that way. And then when you run down the hill, we can't freewheel as runners. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's like, it's just as demanding. So you want to incorporate hills and you run up a hill for an hour, you run down for half an hour. That's like, Although the intensity, when you're looking at heart rate, power output, or speed, I guess would be high, depends if it's a technical trail, the demand then on the body is like really large. Um, So so do you, do runners ever do like shuttles, like mountain bikers do, where (laughs) you get shuttled to the bottom of a hill and then they pick you up at the top and drive you down so you don't have to do the the hard part? I don't know if (laughs) people really like... I've done that. I've done that on Mountain Road, uh, like uh, Mount Ruapehu here in the like, central plateau of the North Island. It's a New glacier Zealand. and a volcano. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just ran up, like we ran up there, uh, me and Karen and Emma. Uh, I'll tell you what, funny stories. Karen's wife picked us up at the top, American lady, and Americans don't have mountain roads like we do, do they, Matthew? Like 25k an hour corners that legitimately mean like go 15k's an hour. And uh, it was, we it was, have them. We it have was them. Yeah. here. It was just like the scariest car ride I have ever been in. Four wheel drive, four wheel screeching on yeah. the road, wow. like all over it. It was, was she trying to get uh, the KOM? <laughs> the downhill. Oh, I was mm, after running two hours up a hill. Anyway. So you do. That's that's the answer. You you try to avoid running that the hard part downhill. If you can, yeah. If you can, definitely, yeah, yeah. Brutal. Because it like it's one of the most demanding parts, the eccentric loading. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But <laughs> in terms of the base, the base phase, it's it's uh for for a four week period zone two. Just keep it. Low and steady, low and steady. So I, I hear people talking about base. This is what Joe Furiel wrote in his book, The Mountain Biker's Training Bible, also the Cyclist Training Bible, is that there's three base phases. So each one's four weeks long, which is actually, so that's 12 weeks of base. And you progressively get 
a little more intensity as you go. Do you do that much, that many base phases? Ah, oh, that's, yeah, it's exactly what I put in my, um, in the endurance training hub plans. Okay, cool. So- and, um, and the 24 week ultra marathon plan, which I put on training peaks as well. Uh, there's three base phase one, two, and three. So, uh, depending on when you're, when you're getting into your training plan, uh, if you, uh, you've finished your event, you've had a few weeks off, you start at base phase one, which is what I've talked about. Zone two only, you're just cruising. You're just getting to the point where you're ready to start training. It's like introductory training. Calling it anything really is kind of actually labeling it as training is, I don't think, fair. Uh, you should, because you, people are going to think, well, I'm running three days a week and it's all one hour, one hour and two hours in the weekend. And I've got to race for 12 hours. It doesn't seem so like you just, but you need to, you need to have a break. You need to get into training. And if you come back from an injury, you need to plop that in. I've called it base phase one. Then base phase two is, is now, now you're ready to, to incorporate, you know, I've got two options of speed sessions in there. Um, and like a, and the, park run like 5k time trial that i talked about um and then you progress into the final the third phase of base phase so the final four week block which is now you're you're at like your max volume that you'd expect to be doing um max sustainable volume like your base space phase so if that's 10 hours a week of running now you're there so now when we enter into what i term build phase preparation phase build phase you now have that 10 hours a week which you can tick off without any issues with some intensity and then we can plock in either your your super hard session for track running or 10ks or we can put in your like eight hour run or six hour run and we can know that you can still go back to 10 hours without any issues that well that's that's a training plan that someone could win just by leaving us a review Totally. Uh, what about you? You um, because you can get back into you know I I work with cyclists and triathletes as well, and you can get back into cycling pretty hard, like pretty quickly. Yeah. Well, the biggest thing with any kind of bike sport person is that as soon as they're into it, they want to go hard. So I have yeah. also twelve week. I just set them out as twelve week base plan. So you have this one plan. It has your three different base phases and it's just four blocks put into one and and when we first get into it it's all about just holding you back that is the main goal so we're we're so far out from our main event like if we're doing a 12-week base phase we still have more training to go before our event because base we we did a whole episode on base training right so base training is preparing you to get the most out of your training because if you don't do base training then you might not be able to sustain the high intensity and volume at the same time once you're training specifically for your event but that doesn't mean that during those 12 weeks of base training we want to be going really hard right away so the first couple weeks are just just reining you in a little bit and making sure you don't go too hard and you're consistently building up volume building up that base because you can't do it for 12 weeks if you're smashed in the first three days. Yeah. So that, that's yeah, tri- what we're doing. So. Triathlon, uh, cycling and swimming are the same. Like it's so easy. If you swim with a squad, it's so easy to jump in and some, someone else is going to be within their different struct, you know, within their different zone, especially if you swim with just swimmers and you'll be like, and you'll just be, you'll be wrecked. You'll be wrecked in the first week and then you get on the bike and you'll want to go hard but running is very different like no one's that keen to have two weeks off running and get straight back into like (laughs) because they'll do one they'll do like a kilometer and then it's like okay no i'm not i'm not doing i'm not because it actually hurts right it hurts your bones and your joints like the other sports you don't really have that to worry about as much you can just thrash your uh your muscle cells and just (laughs) D- dig yourself a hole and not even be able to tell so we try and stop yeah. people from doing that um okay okay so that's like yeah we we've got the phases we've yeah, got the phases yeah. so we're yeah. step five yeah. step five this is this is the exciting part yeah. the training plan this is the mean potatoes i just have potatoes on the mind today <laughs> um 
but this is like it's important to show this is step five you know this isn't the first thing you do you don't just go i want to run a marathon and start writing down all right what am i going to do next monday it's there's a lot of steps that go before putting a training plan in and i start with the skeleton matt of like what can i do each week like what can i do each week without fail like the like the skeleton the very the basics like for me i know 100 percent i can run three times a week i know that and then if we start to go four like ah oh, maybe i could do four okay so four is not the skeleton plan three is and i is it sunday is it saturday is it any day in the weekend is it friday is it what you know, what do you know? What do you, do you know you hate running on Monday? Don't put that in there. Like, that's a given that's, for pretty much any training plan that I build. Like, Monday is off. Yeah. No, nobody wants to be training on a Monday. Yeah. And then sometimes Friday's the same, eh? Like, you just like, pff, I got a big weekend coming up. Yeah. <laughs> I've just been, you know, it's been a big week. I, I want to have some beers at the pub. And Get anyway, smashed. if you know that, like, if you know that, there's no point forcing yourself to train on those days straight up like right into your training plan yeah like yeah. when you're in that early phase like that base phase which i don't you know that introductory phase of yeah, training definitely um i've been working yeah. with a, a new client building his training form personally and you know i've kind of laid everything out and it takes a while to get a really good understanding of what the athlete's normal structure is on a given week because they have you know they have to take the kids to softball or i don't i don't know what kids do these days to esports, e-sports. this day <laughs> and then, like this day um we go to buffalo wild wings or chipotle and then, you, you know so like everyone has their own schedule and it takes a while to actually understand an athlete's schedule and then also push them at the same time right so that takes time so we start with that skeleton and like this is okay do you train tuesday wednesday thursday and you're off monday tuesday and then you always mountain bike with your friends on Saturday. Well, I'm not going to come in here and totally ruin your life by taking away all <laughs> these things that you love. Like, I'm here to help you. So we're going to work around what you do. And when you're building your own training plan or you're working with a coach, like it, it needs to be something that you can fit in without ruining your life. So start with something that you can definitely do. And that's where we start is what you can definitely do. But with as a coach, when you're working with a new athlete, it does take some time to actually figure that out. Because, you know, there might be inconsistencies in the past training that they uploaded and you can't quite tell. You ask them and, you know, it's not written down so they don't remember. Um, and some actually have a good handle on it, but you also need to work in how to push them as you go on in time too. So start with something that you can maintain that is a definite given and build from there. And don't start blowing the doors off right away yeah and that's yeah so once you've got your your skeleton you can just plop that in right through your your plan whatever it is 10 weeks 20 weeks put that in you know tuesdays thursdays saturday then you've got your recovery weeks so you can just leave those blank maybe just put two days in if you're a three-day person if you're a four-day person whatever so you know like straight off the bat you need to have those recovery weeks in your head mentally you know, we're athletes, we, we want to keep pushing, we want to get better and better, we want to keep longer, further, faster, um, all of that. Now you can, you got, okay, cool. Now you can start to go, all right, this week was the Easter weekend, I know that, so there's my basic, and now I can put in extra two. There's an extra two sessions going there. Um, I know that my event, I know these are my phases. Okay, so this is, this four week block is called my high intensity phase. Well, all right, I'll put my high intensity sessions in here. Cool. There they are. Are they, I've looked at my timeline. I've looked now, analyze the event. Sh- like what Matt said, short, sharp climbs. Okay. So they need to be short, sharp climb specific. I'll put those in there. There we go. Okay. Now that's in there. And then the plan really starts to come together. Once your, your, your plan is kind of together, I guess, I, and there's so many things like we can't talk about. I, there's so many sports, so many different events, there's so many different demands, there's demands on time and everything. But if we 
then get into step six, Matt. I think this is like one of the most important, why I put it at the end, the critical evaluation. And so that's when you are going back and you're, you probably want someone, like maybe it's your partner, it's, it's a, maybe it's like a training partner, someone who, maybe it's a coach, someone who knows you and they can look at it and say, are you really going to ride your mountain bike 20 times a week? <laughs> is that, is that smart? Are you going to do that? Are you, are you going to, are you going to do an easy 30 every single morning, Monday to Friday? And do two five hour rides in the weekend. Have you ever done that? <laughs> I think that's the biggest question is like, look at what you've done. Have you ever done anything close to it before? That, uh, that was one of my biggest downfalls when I was initially coaching myself. Same. Was like, same, absolute same. Yeah. It was <laughs> like, why, like, why did I think I could maintain this when it's like 50% above what I'd ever done before? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know why? Do you know why I thought it? Because I went online and I looked at what like, pros are doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And now we've got Strava, so you can see like, oh well, Will's pretty fast. He runs at least a hundred k's every single week. Yeah. Runs like forty, at least forty k's on the weekend. All right. <laughs> or you could be, you could have listened to our last uh, one of our recent episodes on Rob Stanard, and you could be following him on Strava now and see that he did. Like 42 hours of riding last week. He's already got 1500 Ks for the year. And you could yeah. be, you know, shooting to do that. Chances are you're not ready for that. So <laughs> do something that you can maintain. And if, you know, you have a friend look at it and they're like, come on, really? Like, are you really going to do that? You have, you need an honest friend to be able to tell you this but so you know this is where coaches are pretty handy because their job like we're friendly we're friendly guys <laughs> right like and coaches all coaches are pretty friendly because you just have to that's how they got into right, it right by being friendly <laughs> <laughs> like, hey i just want to make a lot of friends i'm going to be a coach but i still need to be pretty honest when I'm looking at someone's training, like, and you can do that, um, while still being friendly coaches. That's what we do, right? We're, we're able to critically evaluate what's going on and pick it apart without making you feel silly, right? Because that's what we do. And we've seen a lot of these similar mistakes. Maybe that you might have made. Maybe you made no mistakes. Maybe you should be replacing our job. But, you know, that's where we're pretty handy is that we look at, we can look at your training plan, tell you, you know, what, what could be improved and look on at through the past and help you with that. Yeah. And that's also like the reason we started our subscription based training sites, like Smart MTB Training and Endurance Training Hub, because that allows you to go in all the training plans you can buy off, off the, you know, Training Peaks profiles, buy it and go, Oh, I see. I see how it all, all works. Wow. That's, that I'll commit to doing this for a few weeks. That's uh, like a lot less than I would have put down. Oh, yeah. wow. Look at all. Like we've built in like performance testers. You, oh, the results are there. I'm definitely not getting any worse. And I'm, you know, doing everything way different. Well, this is interesting. Um, and that's the benefit of those systems is like once you're in there, you can apply whatever training plan you want whenever you want and you get that and you autonomy can, of training which is really good can move them around yeah as yeah. well plus like, there's um, a whole the, workout library right so all the workouts that we use with all our athletes it's in there and you can put that wherever you want so if you're suddenly like base phase one and you're doing three anaerobic sessions per week like you can do it if you want <laughs> but you know if you get us to look at it we'll help you put them at the right time based on your event yeah but yeah there's and and there's books as well with like um if you you know you're from the um previous century and you like to have physical copies of things yeah or you, you can get um <laughs> can download <books>. a pdf <laughs> boomer <laughs> <laughs> 
And right. yeah, so we we've talked about this book before. Joe Friel's uh, the cyclist training Bible. He has I'm pretty sure he has the runner's training Bible. No, no. Well, you should write that one. Uh, the per- performance advantage, Dr. Will O'Connor, runner's training Bible. Highly mm-hmm. recommended book. Not out yet. Watch this space. But also check out <laughs> Joe Friel's mountain bikers training Bible. I used that one for a number of years. I had the same copy even after my dog ripped off the cover and chewed on the corner and most of the pages were like ripped. I still kept that same copy and I used to read that book and design my own training plans that were absolutely way beyond what Joe Friel ever envisaged for training plans because I just read what I wanted to hear. But you can read it and use the information you get from our podcast and use Joe Friel's book to put together your own training plans and you'll have some pretty good basis yeah my book would be probably Arthur Lydiard's one who in the running circles was like the, he's from New Zealand the father of easy oh, like endurance based training he was the pioneer of the 100 mile week uh, which was like unheard of at the time he created multiple Olympic gold medalists uh, through the sort of 70s and 80s but his book is like just running you know it it just it just shows you like black and white how to go about it how to set it out um heaps of schedules in there of weekly schedules um and yeah the other one would be the big book of endurance training and racing by dr phil maffetone just the like whatever sport you're doing that's heart rate based stuff and that's just a, a really fascinating good reference text to to have so yeah maybe put some links to those in in the podcast notes yeah and everyone will be checking the podcast notes because they're leaving reviews trying to win your own training plan that's right that's right all right that's it get that friend critically review your training are you actually going to do that um those are the six steps that's it those are the six steps for uh the writing setting up your successful training plan All right, guys, so that is episode 41, how to write a successful training plan. Now, please remember, leave a review, and you can go in the drawer to win a training plan by Dr. Matt Miller, mtbphd.com, one of his immaculately designed training plans worth like hundreds of dollars. You can get it for free, or you can get one of mine, Dr. Will O'Connor, Performance Advantage, pacoaching.tv. You can get one of those training plans for free just by leaving a review sharing it giving us a shout out so do that and have a great week of training we'll catch you next week